In part three, chapter four of A Clockwork Orange, Alex walks through icy rain until he sees a village that's somehow familiar, even in the dark. He comes to a cottage with home on the gate and knocks for help. A man kindly lets him in to sit by the fire. Suddenly, Alex realizes that the man is the writer whose wife Alex and his gang raped and whose house he trashed. His name is soon revealed as F. Alexander. But the man doesn't recognize Alex because the gang wore masks during the attack. In fact, the man pities Alex, another victim of the modern age, and tends to him in the cozy, book-filled room, then letting Alex bathe and loaning him pajamas, causing Alex nearly to weep at his kindness. The man cooks a large supper, which revives Alex's spirits. How can I ever repay, he asks. The man knows Alex's story and believes Alex has been sent by Providence. Alex relates an inaccurately mild version of the robbery of the old woman's house, claiming that he landed in jail because the old woman's good old heart gave out. The man asserts that poor lad Alex has been punished out of all proportion and is no longer human, but a little machine capable only of good. The man quickly grasps that Alex can no longer enjoy music, art, literature, or even sex. He tells Alex that he and his friends can use Alex to help dislodge this overbearing government and prevent it from turning other decent young men into pieces of clockwork orange. The man absentmindedly washes the same plate repeatedly as he talks and admits that his wife used to handle such tasks while he wrote. Bitterly, he explains that she was brutally raped and beaten and died of shock. Alex, recalling the attack, begins to feel sick, but the man kindly sends him up to bed. Burgess warned that the demarcation of one human impulse from another is tricky. A government may decide that conditioning of some people is in society's best interest, but because conditioning spills over from one behavior, like violent action, to another, like enjoyment of music, the government risks closing off a whole world of non-moral goodness. What is a clockwork orange? F. Alexander muses about marginal conditionings. Humans grow, create, change, adapt. Machines do not. Humans enjoy beauty and music, nature and other arts. Machines do not. When a repressive government removes the human capacity for growth and the appreciation of beauty, it creates clockwork beings, perversions of humanity.